Hi everyone, my name is Tim Banting. I'm the practice leader at Omdia in our digital workplace uh, practice. It's my delight to welcome today Sam Hammock, who's the Chief HR Officer for Verizon. Um, Sam, uh, delighted to talk to you about uh, how Verizon weathered the storm of the pandemic. Perhaps you could say a little bit more about yourself and your very important role at Verizon. Yeah, no, thanks for having me, Tim. My my pleasure to be here as well. So, yes, I have the distinct pleasure and privilege of uh, running our HR function organization here at Verizon. Uh, we have about 120,000 V-teamers, as we call them, across the globe. Uh, and I'm responsible, my organization and team is responsible for really running all of our people strategies and operations. So this includes um, really how people enable us to drive all of our business results, but it includes all things talent acquisition, um, as we think about compensation, benefits, the total rewards that we use to attract and retain our amazing colleagues, as well as learning and development, uh, our talent planning, succession planning. Um, it's, it's really here, it's kind of your traditional, um, everything that encompasses true HR, and we've uh, centralized that. Wow, fantastic. So um, as we look at the pandemic, um, what we've sort of seen is that, that sort of escalated digital transformation initiatives. I wondered during that really challenging time of wholesaling, wholesale move of, of employees away from offices and, and primarily uh, away from stores and into remote locations and working from home. I just wondered how that was for you. How did you care for your people during that time? And how has this sort of really influenced your practices moving forward? So, so the first thing I would say is the number one without fail commitment was the care, safety and health of our employees. Um, as well as our customers. Because as you mentioned, Tim, Verizon, not only we are in stores, right? Um, and so people need to come and visit us. And keep in mind that if nothing, like being connected during the pandemic, when you were not near your loved ones, your family, your colleagues, was everything. And so Verizon had, you know, the distinct, like, quite frankly, obligation uh, to make sure that humans could remain connected. And so as we think about our stores, we also have our employees who need to go into homes as you think about your home internet and things like that. And so we wanted to care for our employees and care for our customers. And that was the number one rule. The first thing we actually did was um, commit to our employees uh, that no jobs were going to be impacted uh, in that in 2020, and that we were going to care uh, first and foremost for them and give them the security that they needed. And then we started to think of, okay, how do we do this? One, we had to get everybody out of offices, but we also had, as I mentioned, had to mention, had to make sure that we were keeping people safe. Uh, and so it was extremely quick. It was an amazing team effort that pulled everybody together. It was hard not to be reactive, right? Because a lot of a lot of um, as we in hindsight, have talked about this. Everyone wants to talk about, oh, we, you didn't want to be reactive, but you did. It was happening very quick. None of us have ever experienced anything like that. And who knew it would last for years uh, in terms of how we tend to do it. And so it, it was really, um, quite frankly, an amazing, amazing effort in terms of all of our customer service uh, folks were able to get the equipment, the tools and what they needed in less than two weeks, 100% in their homes. In the stores, um, it was also like some really cool protocols to make sure that we could still help people get what they need, but with uh, the right and appropriate safety. And so that meant things like, you know, scheduling time in the store, which we hadn't thought about before. Um, all things that we were able to now leverage and bring those practices uh, into the more, you know, modern, innovative world that allow us to service um, in a, some things that we learned that were really helpful. Fantastic. We often talk about uh, people, process and technology. It's something that we've we've referred to for decades in the industry. Certainly looking at the um, people side, it seemed like you were able to react very quickly. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about the tools? You know, we often use the term eat your own dog food or I prefer drinking your own champagne. Were there any tools that you provide customers that you used internally? Did you find out anything around that sort of process as you were working out what tools would be effective? Yeah, um, I love that. So as we just talked about, right, one of the most important things during the pandemic was the, the ability to stay connected. And so certainly as Verizon, our ability to use our own tools that we provide to our customers uh, was a game changer. 
for, for us. So we have tools like our Verizon Connect, which does that. We have our own platform, uh, Blue Jeans, which is a virtual meeting invite. Um, and, you know, software that people can kind of collaborate just like we are today. Um, and so those tools became great. The other thing is when you're using it yourself uh, consistently day in and day out, you make really amazing changes uh, that allow it to be even more user friendly in a fast paced way. So that that piece worked out uh, quite brilliantly for us. Thank you, Sam. So um, I understand Verizon has quite an extensive range of um customer service centers. Could you tell me a little bit more around that and how you're able to delight your customers while still keeping your employees safe? Yeah, Tim, and this is actually one thing that we had as a massive learning that evolved our way of working for the future. So when the pandemic hit, we put all of our customer service uh, care professionals into their homes. And what we found was the productivity was amazing. We had less absences. The ability for us to use the tools to connect with our customers um, was actually far more efficient. We also were able to tap into a different talent pool where instead of being right near our, our centers um, and everything having to be in person, we found that schedules were easier to do and we were able to tap into some of those maybe untapped resources as we were previously. And we're going to leave it that way. So this is uh, this is definitely an advantage that we found during the pandemic and we're going to carry on having our home based customer service centers. Wow, Sam. So some real significant and long lasting changes for Verizon. Um, it, it sounds very interesting. We're going through what I sort of describe as the great experimentation where people are trying to work out how they deal with this hybrid working situation. It feels like the pandemic isn't a blip. It feels like there's some real substantial long term changes there. Um, have Verizon got it sorted out yet? I'm not sure that anyone really has. But what are your views? Yeah, if anybody has it sorted out, I would love to talk to them. I think this is one of those things from across the world that companies are continuing to learn and navigate and evolve to. Um, so certainly for Verizon, we spent a tremendous um, amount of effort. And I think I'm really proud of where we are. Not unlike most companies, we kind of have the three segments of, of work going forward, right? Certainly you have your what has to be on site for us. That's things that are in our stores, et cetera. Um, and then you have the things that can be completely remote, as we just talked about customer service and our ability to have everybody home-based. Uh, but then you have hybrid. And I think hybrid is really that tricky part that people are figuring out. We implemented many tools that allow us to collaborate in a hybrid mo moment. So certainly we have schedulers where everyone can see your schedule because you don't just work in your own team, right? We worked with our internal partners and other organizations. And so we have the ability to see when is someone in the office? When are we going to be collaborate and bring those pieces together. Um, we're also like defining uh, and feel really strongly that the future is really about employee choice. And the more that I look into, you know, what is the workforce of the future or the employee of the future, that that notion of choice is going to be extremely important. And not, it's not just about where you work. I think we're going to start to get into the when you work, the how you work. Um, those are going to be really important questions for us to figure out. The, the where I don't believe the where is as difficult as um, sometimes we're, we're making it. And so really creating the moments that make office places magnets. Um, and we're trying to stay away from that mandate because that feels like you're taking away the choice that employees really so fiercely want uh, in their careers. And as we think about their whole selves and their lives at work. Sounds very interesting, Sam. It almost feels like you've um, identified different personas for their different work styles within Verizon, which is something that we're finding a lot of companies really are, are capitalizing on and, and finding some really unique ways in which they can service those unique segments of employees. Um, I, the other thing that I found very interesting was around the office and how you tempt people back into the office after they spent time away. And for some people, it's about building a sense of community and connection. Um, how is Verizon thinking about this? Yeah, I actually think that's the magic when we think about the in-person moments. Uh, and the workplace is going to evolve, right? Like, working is going to evolve. And for us, as we think about making the workplace a magnet, I don't think we're going to enter back into a Monday through Friday from 8 to 6 p.m. 100% every day, right? I don't see that that future. I don't even see the need for it. 
Now, I do believe that in-person moments are really important. You cannot completely eliminate them. As we think about onboarding new hires, creating the connection, I like to talk about the stickiness, right? Retention has been high on every company's mind uh, these past 18 months, uh, specifically these last 12, and the macroeconomics of what we're facing, uh, you were all exploring that. So as we think about what are the sticky things that be it, the, the natural organic ways that we build relationships matters. It matters in the retention. We talk about leadership a lot and certainly total rewards matter, right? Like that will always help you attract and retain, but it's not necessarily the stickiness uh, that we need. And so the, the in-office collaboration moments are not necessarily about having a meeting together, right? We've proven very effectively that we are very productive in having our meetings um, through formats such as this, right? Virtual videos. What we need to do is create those moments where there are true working sessions. And even if it feels a little soft, right? Those moments where we come together, we're having lunch, you are doing networking, volunteering, um, you know, employee resource group activities have been truly very important and powerful for us that you're building a community and we're doing that based on uh, personas that you're talking about because there are different this is this is another notion of choice uh, that I was referring to earlier and it's really important to lean into that and make sure that we are honoring choice um, but also providing those flat platforms to be able to come in for meaningful things and a lot of times that's connection. Thank you, Sam. It's been really fascinating talking with you. Uh, really appreciate this unique perspective in the life of a, a, a chief HR officer. Thank you very much indeed for your time today. Uh, anything you'd like to say in closing? No, thank you, Tim. You're hitting all the, the items and really hot topics that uh, CHROs and every company that I'm talking to are grappling with. And these learnings are extremely important for all of us. So thank you.